So as some of you may know, I am here because Peggy unfortunately couldn't make it. And I actually have a story about this. So I went to Vienna a couple of months ago, and one of my friends in Vienna runs an Angular meetup. So I went to an Angular meetup, but I don't know fuck shit about Angular, so I was just sitting there in my corner. Also, I don't really want to know about it. Not the point. And um, so I was sitting in my corner, and this random guy passes by, and he like stares at me, goes back, and he waves, and it's like, hi, Peggy. And I'm like, wait, what? And, um, and like, he looks me dead in the eye, he's like, aren't you Peggy? And I'm like, no, my name's Sarah. And he's like, are you sure? And I'm like, I'm pretty fucking sure I know what my name is. But thank you. And like, it, it was truly, truly cer certain that I was Peggy until I actually showed him a photo of Peggy. And he was like, oh, yeah, you two don't look alike. And I'm like, yeah, what? No. No. So it started this rumor that we are actually the same person because no one ever seen us in conferences together. And the fact that I'm here and she's not doesn't really help the situation. But uh, I think this is a nice story to start this, this talk with. And uh, so this guy now knows two, two girls who do GraphQL. So that's good for him. Round of applause for the guy. OK. So my talk is, uh, so my, my talk is called GQL All the Things. Uh, my name is Sarah. And uh, I, like, you, like you said, I'm a developer. Nope. No, I do have stickers. So like I said, I'm a developer advocate at YLD. As like personal stuff, I am really into horrible movies like Sharknado and stuff because I don't, watching people fail on screen gives me life for some reason. I also, as a true Portuguese person, really love football because that's all we got. And uh, I am NikitaFTW on Twitter with two Ks. And uh, I have stickers, so if you want any of these stickers, you can come and find me. Please don't come all at once. That happened once and I have anxiety, so thank you. Just letting everyone know. So I really love GraphQL. Like I know there are a lot of people who like really love VR and can make really cool stuff with it. So I just like I ended up with a boring one. I'm like I really like making servers because that's really cool. And um, so like GraphQL is bay. Like if you don't, this photo was taken in Kiev, and uh, you can't really tell because of the bare hand. But uh, I'm wearing a uh, Ask Me About GraphQL T-shirt and a GitLab jacket, which just like infatuates the nerd part of me. And um, my talk is about managing local state with Apollo. Cool. So I'm going to start with a small alert. And this small alert is that I don't really like Redux. Like, I think Dan is great. Like, I've met him a couple of times. He's the nicest human being that you will ever meet in your life. I swear to God. He's such, he's so, such kindness. But like, I started using Redux mostly about the time when I started using React, as in was like the thing that you needed to use together in order for React to work. I have no idea why this started being a thing. And um, I realized that Redux is like, was fine until I realized that I had to change four files to change an object. And then I got real mad, like real mad, <laughs> and then uh, just stopped using Redux. It's like the idea is really good, but the, um, the boilerplate really affected me. I don't really like boilerplate, so I started using MobX, which is really nice if you've never used it. And uh, I also, after a while, when I started using GraphQL, I started using Apollo to manage like all of the stuff, because why not, right? And I want to point out that something like this has actually happened like three or four times in this company. Like someone comes to me and he's like, so we got this really awesome, dope React project that is all Apollo and GraphQL. And I'm like, dude, that sounds, that sounds dope. So what do you actually use for state management? And that person really like stares me dead in the eyes like Redux. And I'm like, but why though? Like, like I said, GQL all the things. Manage local state with Apollo. So there is this package called Apollo Link State made by the Apollo team, because God bless the Apollo team. And it allows you to do exactly that. So you don't, you don't need to have a, um, you don't need to, to change how you're thinking. So for example, when you go from Apollo, from querying stuff with GraphQL to then go into Redux or MobX, you kind of have to shift your mentality. In this case, you keep using the same things and the same tools, so which is really, really nice. And now you're wondering how. So I'm going to use Apollo Boost in these examples. So these are the things that you have to install. This may have been the folder for my talk, but who knows. Um, and you just instantiate the Apollo client and you pass it and uh, you just instantiate the Apollo provider with a new client. And that's about it. So if you want to add the state, there is just, uh, with, um, with Apollo Boost, this already comes by default, which is really nice. So you just add client state and client state as defaults and as resolvers. So if you've used GraphQL in the back end, you know what resolvers are and they have the exact same, um, the exact same signature in the front end, which is really nice. So again, no change in mentalities and stuff. And you also have defaults. So the defaults are um, your base state. So you also have this in other libraries. So they're basically what you actually start with. So in this case, I'm going to open and close a modal because we all like modals, right? Medium. 
So I have a default which just says an object with an object inside of it called modal. It checks if it's open and it defa the, uh, defaults it to false and then has a type name. Uh, so the type name is actually a, peri a very standard thing in Apollo. It's just so that Apollo knows what the fuck's up. So that he knows what this is. So if you have another thing called door, you give it a type name of door so that Apollo can handle the cache way better for you. This is also, they do this by, by um, they don't do this by anything, but well, that's not what I mean. Uh, they do this behind the scenes when you get stuff from, when you get data, and in here you gotta define it yourself. You can work without it, but I would advise you to do this just for sake of maintaining sanity. And then you have resolvers. So, like I said, if you've used this in the back end, you probably already know where the resolvers is, but basically this is where all the magic happens. So if you have a back end that is talking to a REST API, uh, this resolvers will get the stuff from your REST API and, and like resolve it into something else for you to return to the client. In this case, the resolvers just get stuff from the cache and return it to you. Because in this case, like what we're actually doing is that there is no magical world of, a, of state. I mean, there is, it's cache, cache is magical. I have no idea how cache works. But, isn't it like local storage, right? Okay, not to point. And um, it gets stuff from, from the cache and like resolves it into something that you actually care about which is dope. So in this case, uh, resolvers, and uh, I define a mutation. This mutation is called open modal. In real life, this will be like toggle modal because you get parameters. But for sake of simplicity, this is called open, you're gonna have two mutations, one open and one closes. That's not duplication of code. Don't duplicate code. So open modal, so you get the first parameter. The first parameter is the parent. In this case, there is no parent thing, so we just skip it. And then you get the params. This is where you pass into the GraphQL mutation. Like in this case, you could pass in the value to be true or false. And then you get the cache. The cache is really what we care about because we're not using any of the parameters. And basically, we're setting up the new data that we're going to write to the cache. And in this case, we're, all we're going to do is change this modal open. No, modal is open to true. And leave the same type name and just write this, um, this data to the cache. So you're not actually supposed to return anything. So in this case, in, in this case, English, wow. In this case, it's just return null, which is perfectly fine. Uh, I've spoken to people at Apollo, and um, yes, link doesn't complain. And that's all we got. That's all we get. So then you got to create the mutations to actually do this stuff. So the mutation is like this. So you give it a name so that you know, so that when you open up the dev tools, you know what's up. Because it's not great to have like mutation, 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 mutation. Like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, thanks, mate. So you have a mutation, and I called it open modal, and then you have open modal. And this is the name that we gave it here, as you can see. So the mutation name is the same. And we have an at client. So what at client does in this case is that, so Apollo gets here and it's like, okay, what the hell is this? And then he sees at client and he's like, oh, okay, I'm supposed to get this from the cache. I'm not even supposed to go to the server and try to fetch this. Okay, cool. So if it's not in the cache, we'll give you an error, but it won't even try to get to the server, which is dope. And yeah, that's about it. So, and then you have to create your queries. So in this case, I have a query modal, and I just said modal at client, because that's the name of the object at the top, and then get is open from it. You can also get the type name, you can get whatever you want. This, uh, this works exactly like when you get data, so you can request everything, or one thing, or three things, whatever you want to request, which is great. Same thing with at client. We don't actually um, step back a bit, so I didn't actually define this as a resolver, because there's no need for it. So this will, um, Apollo link state will automatically get your, your base state and the state that you have and define it as queries, which is really nice because no one wants to define resolvers, I think. Okay, so cool. So we made absolutely nothing because we literally just made GraphQL queries but nothing actually works. And that's not, that's not, that's not good, that's not cool. So after Apollo 2.0, one, one or two, we have the query component, yay. Okay, so we, uh, what we do with the query component is that it returns a function and after that function, uh, we, call, we call it with any query that we want. In this case, I call it with a get modal query, query. <laughs> and then we have loading, error, and modal. And I just deconstructed is open from it. And so what we do in here, uh, if you've never used it, is that you check if it's loading first, and then if there's an error. If none of these things are true, just show whatever you want. Uh, but the thing is, this is kind of a lot of code. So if you're gonna put this in every single place where you wanna get some query, this is kind of a lot of code, so you have to check every single time if something is loading. But the, the really cool thing about React that I've come to figure out all, 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 all over this couple of years is that React is very composable. So you can actually create a compo your, your own query component, because 99% of the times you're gonna have the same loading and the same error. If you don't, talk to your designers, that shit ain't cool. 
So let's make this smaller so we can create our very own query component. This is something that every single project that I have has, but I, have an, I don't actually do anything with it. I just copy it from Code Sandbox every time because I'm smart. So you import query from React Apollo, and then so you pass it in all the props because you can pass a whole ton of stuff, um, not like the query, the variables. You don't want to care about that, so you just pass in everything. It's like, do it, do your thing. And you check if it's loading. You check if it's an error, and if none of these things happen, just return the exact same thing that basically React Apollo returns. So return children as a function with the data inside of it. If you want to do pagination, this is actually not enough. You also have to return the fetch more, and you can return anything that you want. But the, the most important thing is that you don't have to do these checks anymore. So our code went from that to this, which is way nicer. Oh, it's also way, oh, my thing is there. Thanks, guys. Of, like, let me know about that. Thanks. So, uh, which is way nicer. So basically, now you just you do the query and you get the data automatically. You don't have to check anything because that's all done behind the scenes, which makes it sound so much better. But and it fits on one slide. Yay, cool. But there is actually no modal. <laughs> so what we do here is that we query if the modal is open, but the modal is closed by default, so we're actually not doing anything. So we need to mutate the state. So let's go to the mutation part. Mutation component, okay. So you import mutation from React Apollo and the open modal thing that I defined like 20 slides ago. And uh, what the mutation component does is that it returns the name of, the, the name of your mutation as a function. So in my case, this code's case, in the case of this code, the name of the function was open modal, so that's what we get. And uh, so on click, we just called open modal. And this will go back to the resolvers and do all of your thing and literally just set the state to true which will automatically trigger a change in your render and you have a modal, welcome to the internet. The thing is, you probably still think it's too much code if you've never used Redux in your life. And I get that, like, uh, we like smart code. We like really, really smart code. So I got you fam. So there's this uh, thing called the Apollo consumer and the Apollo consumer is something that uses the context API in React. And so basically what this does is that it's used for very simple, very simple, listen to what I'm saying, mutations to the cache, do not use this as state management. Please, thank you. Next slide. Okay, we import the Apollo consumer, and the Apollo consumer receives the cache by itself, so you can just write anything you wanted to the cache, and you can see that this will get out of hand. So really small things. So in this case, you just, you get the Apollo consumer, and you on click, you write, the thing that you wanted to the cache and will automatically update your store and will also update your UI. So for really small things that you wanna do, this is perfectly fine, actually. And the thing, the good thing about this is that you don't actually have to define the resolver or the mutation because that's exactly what we're doing here. So what we're doing here, this is basically the resolver. And um, there is no mutation because on click, we're just writing to the cache. So for really small stuff that you just want to toggle something, this is really useful because there is way more, way, well, not way more, way less boilerplate for you to deal with. Yay, no one likes boilerplate. Okay, now, can you make the query and mutation component fit in one slide? Actually, this screen is pretty big, so I got, I got good at that one. Watch me. Okay, it literally fits to the bottom. I nailed it on that one. Okay, there is no imports though. Because that didn't fit. Okay, so um, you have your query, and then another thing that the query uh, component gets is the client, which is something uh, that basically the, the Apollo team calls uh, cache client. I call cache cache. You can call cache client or client cache. I don't, okay, that was getting very confusing. The client is the cache. That's all you care about. And on click, basically you do the same thing as you did with the Apollo consumer, because since you get the cache, you can just write to it, and then if the modal, and, and then when you write to it, you say visible data that modal open. And that's it. So you, you write data and then you check that data. Since this, is, uh, this will all reflect in your UI, the, the moment you click on it, the modal will open. But not close, because who the fuck needs that, right? Welcome to the internet. Okay, fine, I'm gonna fix your problem. This one, not the internet's problem. We're pretty screwed on that one. Okay, so I created a function called change state. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. This was mostly just to fit on the slide. And um, <clears throat> this function gets the client and gets the value that you want to pass to it. And this is obviously like you can just do toggle modal. In this case, for simplicity, not uh, for like for making more sense, I just use this function. So what this will do is write data. So from data, it's going to get modal is open and change the value to the value that you pass to it. So okay, 
First thing that you do is when you click the button, on click, you're gonna change the state and you're gonna pass it to the client because it doesn't have access to the client outside of the query component. And then you're gonna set to true, the model will open. Yay, cool, cool stuff. So on request close, basically you say change state to false and you will go there and you will close the modal. And that is it. So this all fits in one slide, which is really, really nice. So you get a really good idea and you get a really good base of how to work with client, with client state. So, so now uh, I'm, I'm gonna talk about the, I'm just gonna go over some of the new Apollo things that are coming out, and okay, so new Apollo things, yay! Who likes Apollo? Everyone likes Apollo. Okay, so uh, one of the problems that Apollo Boost had is that we couldn't set our own cache, which uh, basically meant that it didn't support SSR, because the way that Apollo does SSR is that you create your own, uh, like basically your JSON thing that goes into the HTML, and then you have to restore it as a cache, but since it didn't support that, we couldn't restore it, and now it does, so there is no need to be installing all of the stuff just to have support for SSR, because now you can do that. So that's dope, yay. Uh, Apollo Link State uh, is actually not a part of the Apollo client for now, so it's a part of Apollo Boost, but not a part of the Apollo client. It's confusing. It's not gonna be confusing anymore, because everything's gonna be a part of everything, yay. So, uh, tools like Apollo Boost will be the default. So when you install things like Apollo Client, it will basically install Apollo Boost. So it was kind of like, so there was the shift from Apollo 1 where they had one thing to Apollo 2 when they had 30 things. So now they realize that maybe uh, starting with Apollo Boost may be a better idea and then you can extend upon Apollo Boost instead of doing the other way around. So these will be the norm and when you install it, it will probably be something like this, which is really nice. Yay. Cool. Apollo CLI, uh, this is actually already available. So the Apollo CLI uh, gives you types and there is a video that is not playing from the start and there is no controls. Okay, y'all gonna have to wait because I try to be very smart about videos on MDX stack. Okay, there we go. So you can run generate uh, code gen and this will create TypeScript types for your, uh, for your queries and for your mutations. And as you can see, like you can open it and go to TypeScript to the TypeScript file, and you'll get TypeScript to, um, things for your query and your mutations. So, and yeah, that's about it. Like really nice, and you get types, which is something that we've been missing in the front end a bit. In uh, the new Apollo, then uh, this also watches. Yeah, so when you change something, it will actually watch your changes and create new TypeScript files, which is dope. And uh, in the new Apollo, we also have something called op opt-in schema validation. So the problem with schema validation on the front end is that it requires a lot of libraries that will, like, remember that not everyone has really good internet. I was stuck at Starbucks yesterday for four hours and I had 0 0.5 megabytes of internet. And that was not good. So the, when you do this, uh, this will create a lot more stuff in your bundle. <laughs> I like the word bundle. And, um, so this is opt-in, and when you go into production, this is actually not a thing. So it's like a development tool that you can uh, like validate your schema upon. So basically, local schemas and everything will be opt-in schema validation, which is really, really nice. And uh, so this is the Apollo CLI, so you can try it today. This is actually already available, which is really nice. And you can just install it as any NPM module. So npm install dash g Apollo, or yarn add global, or global add. I'd never know. I actually use Yarn, but for installing things globally, I use NPM, because I can never remember which side of the thing the global is. I don't know, is, is that just me? No. Yeah, it's really confusing. It's like includes and the other one that I forgot. <laughs> okay, so I have one final thing to which I will get my phone for. So unfortunately, no one of the Apollo team could be here, and that is really sad, but I wanted to make something. Wait, let me just record. So no one from the Apollo team, unfortunately, could be here today. Uh, but I would like everyone to just like give a really big hand of applause as a, a thank you for the amazing work that they've done for the open source team and for everything in GraphQL and uh, how they made our lives incredibly easier. So if, if that would be great, I would love you all to like stand up.